Compensatory mutations are selected for because they reduce the negative impact of another mutation. If you start with the wild type uh, organism and that organism has a detrimental mutation, uh, that mutation lowers that organism's fitness. However, it's possible to have additional mutations that have the effect of raising the fitness of the organism, particularly given the presence of the first mutation, and these mutations are called compensatory mutations. It's possible to have more than one compensatory mutation. In fact, you could have multiple compensatory mutations that slowly build up the fitness back to where it was prior to the first detrimental mutation. Often these compensatory mutations are, are provide an increase in fitness, especially and perhaps only um, in the presence of this other mutation, the original detrimental mutation. The compensatory mutations therefore are conditional, but not conditional uh, in the sense of having different phenotypes or different fitness effects in different environments, but instead conditional in the sense that they have different impacts depending upon the genotype that they are found in or found in association with. Compensatory mutations can be an important means by which organisms are able to recover from, in fact, having detrimental mutations and may very well serve as a means by which organisms can move from one adaptive peak to another um, such that an initial detrimental mutation takes them to a lower fitness level, but they may then be able to climb up essentially to some alternative adaptation.